So we have to have really good um, product design of not only the usability of our back office tools, but also be fairly cognizant of uh, you know, the latest consumer trends or, or what's happening in the social networking space to really try and make sure that our customers' online video business is really successful and is sort of meeting their audience's needs. From the very beginning, we've been very focused on allowing non-media companies to have the same powerful tool set. So if you're an, an institution or the government or a corporation and you have a message and you have communication that you want to deliver to your audience, you can use the exact same things that one of the top five channels in the U.S. would have been able to use. This fall, we launched a, a new version of our product called Brightcove 3. And Brightcove 3 was really a fundamental rethinking about the workflow. And what was most important is that we had a very good grasp on who our customers are, the users in those customers, the different personas and the roles that they play in their organization, and the different uh, responsibilities that they have. And as part of that, we took the functionality that was available in the console and broke it across three main areas around managing your media, publishing your video players, and controlling your advertising if you're a media company. Each module is broken down into uh, a separate place that focuses on users grouping their content, organizing it into playlists, and then grouping those playlists and programming them into video players. A separate module that focuses on creating the video players and choosing a template or a layout to put on their website. And organizing the look and feel of what that player experience uh, is like on their site. So selecting the colors, selecting the fonts that match the, the company's brand. So diving into one of these areas, like the media module, the video objects or the titles are sort of the first class object in this world. The assets are secondary in nature in that you can have stills or images and the underlying uh, video files. Once you've organized all that content, you can also then, as a media producer, program that content into your different video players. Different playlists that I can add or remove. So I can go in here and select the different playlists that I have available, add them to this video player, and that video player will instantly be available on, on my website. And I can go into one of these and actually create and style these different uh, video player experiences where I can I get access to different styling tools um, to actually manage how the videos will look. And then finally, sort of the last user persona is around the advertising. So if you're a media company, you want to make money off of your content. And so you get a worldview across your video library and your players, and they're able to set up different uh, metadata models for how uh, your campaigns get managed by adding different advertising key value pairs or setting up the ad policies for my players also. What we focused on very, very early was really trying to make the system as simple as possible. Literally, if you had video content and you could encode it digitally, you could upload and launch and create a video player experience in less than 30 minutes. That was sort of like the design mantra. Whereas before, it may have been an engineering project that you'd have to get your IT group involved that would take months. Um, but with our system, literally, it was all UI, uh, you know, application-based, upload your content, create a video player, skin it, brand it, put it on your website, and it's all done instantaneously.